Milwaukee TV history. Right, right. But in terms of the horror hosts, um, there are some updates coming this week. And we spent a lot of time uh, here recently getting up some audio clips of the old Nightmare Theater show with Dr. Cadaverino. Some uh, local uh, collectors happened to tape these shows on reel-to-reel -reel audio tape back in 1964. And we go all the way back to show number th three in October of 1964, all the way up through um, the Farewell Show of 1977. So we get six and a half hours of these old Nightmare Theater shows on audio. They don't exist on video. There are only a few shows that exist on video because the station used to uh, erase the tapes and reuse them. That will not happen on Crimson Theater. I can guarantee they will not be erased. They're going to be mass marketed, I think. <laughs> Anything else? Uh, some other thing you were talking about? Well, the next article in Scary Monsters magazine is going to um, look at Edison's Frankenstein. Al Detloff, who was your was it just on? your guest uh, this evening when I brought down here to the, to the uh, Mana Studios, um, discovered this film in his collection. It was thought to be lost for many, many years. He discovered the film in his collection and uh, has uh, preserved it and has now released it, of course, on DVD. And um, the next article, which will be out next month in January, uh, Scary Monsters Magazine, who I write for, uh, talks about uh, the story of Edison's Frankenstein, um, a synopsis of the film itself, plus talks a little bit about how Al, Al found it, how he preserved it, how he made his first 16 millimeter copy. Uh, it's a fascinating story of this thing he just found in his collection. Well, that's what we're all looking for, you know, those little things that people might have found. And of course, we're always looking for that sort of thing. I know I am. And uh, well, you'll have to come on the show now that we're going live. You have to stop by more often, as well as our other guests are invited back. And uh, thanks a lot for bringing Al. And uh, thanks for coming again. And you know, ghoulies, when it comes to horror host history, I just got to hand it to you, Dick. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's all I can say. Anyway, I got. I guess we're going to have to get. But you're going to join us at uh, the Times this week? I could. I... I would like to see all my ghoulies at the Times Cinema for Godzilla, Mothra, King Gehedra. You know, they'll be lurking around in the front of the place if, you know, you don't like those sort of movies. Watch it when the doc lurks. I better watch out for those eggs, you know. They've got some raunchy, stinky eggs they like to save all summer, and then when they see the doc, pow! Anyway, ghoulies, you get to that thunder thigh action. Godzilla raids again on Dr. Destruction's Crimson <laughs> Theater. Theater. Now go to it, ghoulies. Be happy. Christmas. I guess that's where the movie ends. We couldn't show the whole thing. We cut out some of the, uh, the, the love scenes, which I really don't know if they have much place in a Godzilla movie, but uh, I enjoy these movies so much. I've always enjoyed Godzilla films, and that's why I'm looking forward to the big weekend coming up here on the 27th. Uh, it ought to be fantastic. I can't wait. It'll be great. Uh, we've had a great time. I'd like to thank all my guests for showing up and making my first live show in Milwaukee I think it wasn't so bad. I don't know. It looks like we've got some good teamwork going on here. And uh, Al, it was good to see you on the show. I don't know if we see him now. Why don't yeah, you just come you in there by Perry? Yeah, you can look at me here before I go. All right, yeah, get a look at him. And, and remember to check out his Edison good. Frankenstein. It was great. Right. Oh, it was such a good to see you there. I will give you a copy. Okay, then maybe you are a bit the Santa Claus in you. Right, I don't know. Right, yeah. I heard rumors on Crimson <laughs> Theater, but you know how that goes on Crimson Theater. But make sure to check us out at GMK at the Times. Uh, well, if, I'm not supposed to talk about the mayoral election in Kenosha, but guess what? I'm in Milwaukee. I'm going to win this one, ghoulies. And when I become mayor of Kenosha, of course, I'm going to remodel the municipal building to look like Vlad Tepish's castle. I think the tourism that I'll bring in just for that, we'll be able to lower the taxes for the senior citizens that are getting taxed out of their homes in Kenosha, which we're not happy about. That made the doc have to run. You know, he was joking around in the beginning. But uh, too many people took him seriously, and uh, the doc's got a serious side. Now but it's official. I'll try not to ruin that Crimson Theater fun with that serious side. Uh, it looks like we're running out of time here, ghoulies, and uh, check out the, your local times and listings for uh, 15 minutes. Five minutes, oh, okay. See, we got all kinds of problems in Crimson Theater. I have five minutes of time, yet to do battle. Anyway, that's a good thing, because... The show is going to be on Tuesdays from 7.30 to 9.30, I believe, live here in Milwaukee, starting January. I just can't wait for that. So uh, the local ghoulies can definitely get hold of uh, Dr. Destruction. Uh, I guess they're going to have to email me through Matta at this point. Otherwise, uh, what do I got for an email these days? Uh, anybody? My email address changes constantly. But with the, well, they can uh, grave sites, right? Uh, they, well, they can email me personally, and I can give it to you. Okay, tell, me, tell them how to do that. Scary Perry. 
at acronet.net. Oh, there you go. Scary Perry. You'll keep me informed. And we're looking for Milwaukee guests now, anyone associated with theaters, the horror genre. And uh, we're going to have to focus on some bands. We'll go out and do some remote stuff and get some bands. I know I've got some treasured footage of Trash Fest 2002, which the doc hosted. I'm sorry I didn't make it to the other one, Fly, if you're watching. But uh, I get you a good band real quick. Lots of great bands up here in Milwaukee. There's no doubt about it. I'm a fan of the Milwaukee music scene, which has always been awesome. Lots of great bands. And uh, I want I, I need a Nelsonic CD. If you're out there, I need desperately to have a Nelsonic CD because uh, there was a little fire in the castle uh, a couple years ago, and then my copy burned up. And uh, that was a, just a terrible thing. Uh, that's a great band. One of my favorite Milwaukee bands. Of course, Fly and the Swatters is another uh, memorable Milwaukee band. Uh, Nicole and the Educators, that was always a great one. Um, there's some good uh, disturbing music up here in Milwaukee. I like it. It's the way it should be. And uh, anyway, Ghoulies, Godzilla raids again. Now, what did you think? Uh, you can email Scary Perry and you can let me know uh, exactly what you thought of that one. If you're a fan of the Godzilla movies, uh, I heard this GMK is supposed to be the most absolute best Godzilla movie ever made. And uh, Godzilla vs. the Destroyer was pretty good. All the whole, uh, the whole genre from the 90s of the Godzilla movies was fantastic. It's amazing. Godzilla is just a mythical masterpiece. Japanese modern mythology. I just love it, Ghoulies, but you know, they really flopped with that American version with Matthew Broderick. Oh, was that terrible. Oh. Maybe if they would have called it the Beast from 2,000 Fathoms, it would have worked. I wouldn't have had a problem with it. But how did they think they were going to reinvent a legend like Godzilla? And, uh, you know, they just blew it. They could have made that really cool. And uh, I'm sorry if I like to criticize movies, but uh, that's one of the doctor's favorite things to do because some of these so-called uh, big-budget uh, masterpieces are total flops. And uh, it's much more successful sometimes just to have a guy in a rubber suit and be done with it. I mean, it is what it is. When something works, don't fix it. And uh, e Either way, it's great to see these great, you know, old horror classics up on the big screen. You know, especially when they make the new ones. Godzilla on the screen, 20, 30 feet tall. Oh, it was really fun when I saw Godzilla 2000 to see all the little children with their parents in the movie theater. And they're holding... They're little Godzillas to watch them. I thought yes. that was really cute. And, of course, Crimson Theater, uh, Ghoulies, uh, we, we encourage you to stay up late with the kids and watch the late-night horror films like we did back in the days of Dr. Cadaverino. Uh, Toulouse was on in the afternoon. Speaking of him, he's yes. still running around somewhere in Milwaukee. I think we're going to have to catch up to Toulouse. Maybe we can get him on as a guest. Anyway, I'm told that's all we have time for. So we'll see you next time on Dr. Destruction's Crimson Theater. Now you have a horrifying week. And a scary Christmas and a horrible New Year. Now, go on. There you are, ghoulies, and I hope you enjoyed that very vintage show. Uh, certainly one of my favorites, and driving up and doing the show live uh, in Milwaukee was something that was great. I'd like to, I'd like to do all that again. Uh, yeah, that's you know, cool. If you can handle the raw ability of live television, uh, which is what we do here most of the time anyway. Uh -huh. Definitely has been a pleasure. <laughs> uh, yes, good times up there at Mana. What was it? We used to go to some pizza place on 27th Street afterwards. I can't remember the name. You can't for the remember life the name. <laughs> no, that was a long time ago. Yeah, you know, when we got done with that live show. We all, you know, uh, Dick Nightlinger, uh, Scary Monsters writer, and he wrote that very interesting book on Milwaukee television. Uh, he was, he was, he was not a, uh, he was nothing stupid about the man. He was very uh, smart and into the the horror host and the tradition of Milwaukee television, which is far more richer than what we have when we've never had a television station before. Uh, in Kenosha, this is it. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. you know, Milwaukee laughed at that harder than we did. <laughs> <laughs> Nevertheless, like we we spoke of earlier, uh, uh, growing up on some key Milwaukee horror hosts, one of course was the one and only Toulouse No Neck. Uh, Toulouse Rick Felsky, I believe, uh, uh, did a fantastic job. A wild character. Some thought that he was kind of kind of copying uh, Dr. Cadaverino, but he actually had no clue about him. He came from another city, and it was wow. accidental, maybe. I don't know. Some people say, you know, make Sven Gulli references when they see me. What are you going to do? Mm -hmm. mm. I mean, the original Sven Gulli. Yeah. Um, <laughs> 
it, it, it really doesn't matter. Uh, uh, Too Loose was one of my favorite hosts. And uh, actually, back when I had a punk band called the Dead Leathers in 1981, we went down to uh, Kenosha. He was doing an appearance in Kenosha on the streets back then. How when they cool. had the pedestrian mall, remember that? Mm -hmm. Oh, and the <laughs> spooks could hide out behind the... Behind the rocks and jump out at unsuspecting tourists? Yikes. Oh, wait a minute. There wasn't any tourists. <laughs> 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 All right. Anyway, uh, we met him down there in full costume. Well, just a few weeks into the beginning of Crimson Theater, my good friend, uh, uh, Professor Spring, who helped kick off the show with me and is now working his magic in Las Vegas somewhere, Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Professor Spring sprung it on me that uh, <laughs> you're going to be interviewing Too Loose, No Neck, Rick Felsky on your show. And we had just started this one. So, I mean, like, all right, it was unnerving enough to have Dick Nightling around, writer for Scary Monsters and all, you know. All right. Anyway, wow. the pressure was on. And uh, who would, you know, how lucky did we get to have, have him come on and talk about Too Loose, No Neck, sharing some vintage clips on top of it. Right. Uh, amazing way to kick off a show. Little did I know we'd have we'd meet, interview some other great hosts after this, and more to come. By the way, of a very special Madison Horror host, which some of you Milwaukee people might know as well. But right now, without further ado, let's get right into it. That's right, a very rare, unprecedented interview with Toulouse No Neck, part of Milwaukee television history. I can't tell you how happy I am to have as my guest, Rick Felsky, who played Too Loose No Neck on WISN TV for many, many years. Welcome, 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 my zombie friend, and I seen you brought an associate. But Jim, another zombie! Jim Freely, I have a feeling we're in for lots of trouble here. <laughs> I and, think you're uh, stuck. <laughs> I understand that you were the last one to find out that you were going to be a horror host. You're talking to him? You're talking I'm not to me. talking to you. Oh, me? Yeah. I'm talking to you. I'm sorry. You're talking I'm... to me. Talk yeah, to me. that's... Uh, uh, who's the horror host? He's the girlfriend or the... <laughs> Dr. Oh, Destructo. You're this very, 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 very true. I was the last one to know that uh, I was going to come up with uh, this character. You know, we just were characters anyway. I mean, we're always having... Speaking of yourself. Time. I can but when I'm I, normal. <laughs> <laughs> but when I uh, seriously though, when he did come up with uh, the idea that they're going to air these movies at Channel 12, uh, I found out uh, one guy was going to come up with a set, one guy was going to do lighting, um, and then one guy came up with his lunch. One guy came up with his lunch. Yeah. In fact, get rid of this guy, <laughs> would you please? Did you have to have? Uh, I don't know. Know. Professor Spring, do you got one of those? One of those things with the red ball that you keep in your pocket? You know what they oh, one of those Ben Wall No, I don't know, something like that. Sounds in flames, but that's, that's the one. Okay. But anyway, that's why right. I was uh, the last one. They said, by the way, you're going to come up with a, a character for these movies. They would, but um, yeah, so uh, it all worked out. And then later on, I ended up doing the lighting and the set. And, I see. And, and the whole and, uh, how you did you get the name for this character again? What name was that? Too Loose No Neck. Oh. <laughs> well, look at his neck. <coughs> it's pretty loose. You mind if I talk? I don't do mind. Do you mind if he talks, Dick? Yeah, you can talk. You talk. can talk. Can talk. talk. Do you mind if he talks? Dick I don't, don't know. know. Dick would be a little bit worn out after the wind he emerged <laughs> on us. <laughs> Pardon me? Oh, my oh. God. <laughs> Emerging. I know. That, you were wondering what that was. <laughs> I can't smell, so it doesn't bother me. Emerging. Oh, my God. <laughs> Things are out of hand. Emerging way. Tell them about your name. Back Ooh. then, we, uh, we used to also do a live, uh, live show called <laughs> Dialing for Dollars with Howard and Rosemary. So then your zombies are Don't bang older, the a lot older, they would remember that show. So when I first came up with the, um, the character, they said, hey, in about 15 minutes, we're going on the air, let's have this guy come on and we'll promote the new show that we're going to show movies and blah, blah, blah. And uh, 10 minutes before air, um, I said, well, how are we going to introduce this guy? Are we gonna, everybody's in the corner and they're going, uh, Dr. Gravedigger. Uh, uh, the, the mad monster, uh, I don't know, just boom like that. I go, Toulouse Lautrec, Toulouse No Neck. Just came in my brain and boom, you're on. And we're on that quick. Oh, that's very interesting. Isn't well, it I, though? I, now, do you, you didn't <laughs> happen to remember a certain, uh, you did a live appearance in downtown Kenosha back when we had like one of the worst ideas for a downtown I've ever seen. Back when Kenosha had a downtown? <laughs> well, it's a lot better now. Have you been oh. in downtown lately? No, I think I, I blinked. We just take you on a trolley ride. 
We've got trolleys down there, all kinds of fun going on. They opened up the street again. Uh, trolleys, trolleys, yeah. trolleys, too. But, uh, no, I do uh, remember being in beautiful, wonderful downtown Kenosha. And remember the uh, punk rock kid coming up and getting an autograph, maybe? I don't know. Maybe, yes, maybe. I do. Something about leather. I don't understand. Yeah, the leather the, thing. <laughs> All right, the dead leathers. He, he autographed mm -hmm. for the dead leathers. And uh, by the way, uh, the Lampini brothers were there with us, too, that day. Now, uh, you shot your opening in sort of a cemetery, didn't the opening for we the show? We shot it actually in a cemetery. Well, that's sort of a cemetery. Well, in fact, it was a very, very hey, spooky. Got a cemetery. funny joke. This is from my dad. Oh, his cemetery joke. We yeah. got to take it. Okay, is this okay. one going to be okay for a three o'clock time slot on Tuesday? Oh afternoon? yeah, yeah. This right. is yeah. roll that footage. This is in honor <laughs> of, of my dad, of dad. Okay, Mr. Great. Feely. <clears throat> why do they have fences around a cemetery? I don't know why. Because people are dying to get in there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, All right okay. I know this is going to be a bad uh, question. Uh, elaborate some more on the last question, or go. I'll ahead. elaborate now that he's over. But actually, we uh, wanted to. Uh, uh, come, the director said we're going to do this uh, scary program, and he had all these great ideas, and we wanted to shoot in a cemetery. And no cemetery in the Milwaukee area would let us shoot in anything in the cemetery. So we went everywhere. No luck. We finally, I, I probably can't say where we went though, can I? Uh, <laughs> ah, it's old history. Anyway, we found, it, we, found a, we found an old, old cemetery dating back to uh, 17, even 1800s. And we were way, way, way back there and it was a snowy, cold, snowy night. Had a little remote truck and we barely fit on the crickety bridges going back there. And uh, we actually, uh, that's where we shot, in a, in a cemetery. All right, this is going to be a really dangerous question to ask here from my, what I've already seen, but uh, you had some sidekicks on the show? If you may want to call them them. Okay. Shall I mention a couple? Well, I thought you'd mention the one next to you, though. No. I don't think I have to. <laughs> I think he's already I think we all. I have nothing to say. <laughs> I think we all know this Jim Feely, and Jim has been on many, many shows, and he was uh, in there from close to the beginning, and he played many parts. And not to mention Dr. Feely Stein, but later on he really, really developed as he became Toulouse's girlfriend, Betty. Uh -huh. But we never did All anything. right, wait a minute. I, I wasn't never, a yeah, I've been <laughs> hearing a lot of that. It was that never I'll tell you what. Leave no. me. No. <laughs> okay, okay, let's just stop that one. Uh, but not that, you, Oh, but I'm saying we also had uh, him do the Hindu, him do Hindu, but not Windows. Mm -hmm. uh, Boo Boo Balboa, the humpback fool. He was a uh, yeah. Uh, sidekick. He was um, quite a Uncle bit. Geek was very popular with Uncle Geek for a long time. So we had to get those chickens all the time. Well, that's true. There won't be no, no rubber chickens. No rubber chickens. No rubber rubber chicken. chickens. Yeah, but headless Stop rubber chickens. Sure. But uh, <laughs> Betty, Betty was a was a big force, a fart there. And I had to uh, get those balloons to just right. inflated just right, right so that they would... Betty had kind of that uh, mono mammary, the one it's balloon. It's easy for you to one say. Balloon, <laughs> one <laughs> balloon in the middle. They there. never hung down. Okay, another thing I, I, I just have to ask you. Yes. I see. I saw the picture of you with Vincent Price, and if you could just yes. elaborate yes. a little bit on that and how that came about. Well, on a serious note, uh, it's about well, time. You know, yes, that would, would be different. I would, yeah. have to say, <laughs> I would have to say that meeting uh, Vincent Price was probably the... A uh, big highlight for me, and uh, he'd come to the studio, Channel 12, one day, and he was taping in one studio, and I was taping in the other, and he finished, and he was walking through, and we, our eyes just happened to meet just, it was like, just like that, and we looked at each other, and he rushed over to me, and he said, I don't know, how very nice to meet you, and we embraced, we embraced, and out of, again, out of nowhere, we just started dancing the tango. Oh, studio. that must have been something else. And it was wonderful. And luckily, someone was there with a camera, and we got some nice pictures and yeah, well, autographs, and he was a super, super nice guy. Very he did good have some very humorous roles, like his wine tasting with, yeah. uh, with Peter mm -hmm. Laurie. That one was a great one. Now, later, your show kind of developed into a rock video show now, didn't it? Well, actually, no. It was a separate show. Oh, it was a, a separate, separate show. show. Okay. We, um, rock videos became the uh, craze, and then, again, I was told that I was going to uh, do a rock video show. And that became, that was Shock Rock. Mm -hmm. Totally different program. Okay, I was a little confused there mm -hmm. about that. No um, movies involved, just videos. So you actually did produce all your own shows? Yes. Mm -hmm. Very good. And you lived in a rather Call famous that. house in the area, too. Uh, well, actually, I had the opportunity to live in uh, people in the Milwaukee area, while the Tulsa area might uh, recall a dilapidated huge mansion that uh, 
Liberace was going to buy one day, one time. Mm -hmm. It was years ago, and it, uh, in fact, it looked like the Munster's house. And that's another story. When Eddie Munster came into town and we did some taping, I told him, I got a house for you, buddy. <laughs> I said, after uh, bar time, we're going to have a little party. Come on over. <laughs> and uh, you, you would really get off there of the There was a lot of wild parties at the... Uh, so, I mean, um, you know, that's a good thing. Well, I remember yeah. a wild party when we had Willard Al Yankovic come to the show. And he was on the show. Yeah. And then we went out afterwards with his uh, yeah. promotion woman. Yeah. And we went to bars and ended up at your place playing 45s on a little record player. Really? Yeah, he wasn't there. <laughs> no, but I'm just saying how great a time. Some good you time. show people, Jesus. people from California, you come home and you play 45s on a record player. I wish we could have hooked up with you when you were downtown Kenosha. Yeah, because, boy. Uh, they don't have 45s in Kenosha? What's that? They don't have 45s in Kenosha? Yeah, they do. It's a little it's record. Your, yeah, they've got records <laughs> like oh. that in Kenosha. Oh, uh, okay. in the oh museums. you got me completely off track. Here, let's see. What was my next question? Move on, doctor. All right, my next question. What is possibly your most uh, remembered experience from your horror hosting days? Well, like I said, a big one would have been Vincent Price. But I mean, well, that wasn't really, he, you said you um, met him in the hallway. It wasn't necessarily the, on, to do with the I would horror. say to do with the show, one of my favorite shows was uh, <laughs> uh, Fishing on Lake Michigan. I'd have to say <laughs> Fishing on Lake Michigan. As with, two loose known, as two that loose would be known hilarious. With, uh, um, the captain, uh, Captain Carney, who we had at the time, and he was dressed up on his pirate outfit. Betty was there, of course. Okay. And uh, we had a, a bevy of... Uh, Beautiful women. Uh, well, crew. Our crew. Yes. And, well, and, and, I can't and, help and, if they were beautiful and in bikinis, and I mean, they were sailors. And it was cold out. Sailors. You've got, you got to have girls in bikinis. And, and, and I couldn't help if it was five please. in the morning and cold also. But and, and my other question. Good time. Another question. Um, now, did you, did you ever think back in the time, like maybe when the show ended and you weren't doing it anymore, that there would still be a strong interest now, like no. there is? No. You didn't think so? <laughs> 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 Not at all, huh? Uh, I didn't think... To tell you the truth, I really didn't think about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you just go on and you're doing it, you're doing that, you're doing the now, you know. Right. You don't think, well, what happens after I do? Are people going to remember this? I mean, we're just doing our thing, having a good time. And if someone out there is watching, if there's a zombie out there, oh, who there was watching, a zombie, he might have turned into a ghoulie on you uh, a little ghoulie? later. But, but uh, nevertheless, uh, then you remember uh, these things. You know, that brought us. That brought us joy. That's what it was all about. But we were just doing our stuff for ourselves. If anybody else happened to like it, <laughs> well, I think a lot, people, lots of, uh, lots of people I know definitely, definitely I remember. So. I hope uh, so. I, I've been hyping this uh, particular show for a while, even though it's much different because we've got guests right. and you know, I mean, we had a lot of historical points of view, and uh, now we've got some total ludicrous uh, dialogue. <laughs> total ludicrous. What did you say? I got total ludicrous. <laughs> no, no, my friend. Licorice. Ludicrous. Licorice. It's close. So if no, 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 that's a <laughs> headache. I learned this from Ironized Cody. You Indians, when they have headaches, this, this is, hey, this is another learning part, just like his history. You go like this, and the more times you open your hand, the more thumping you have in your head. That's true. Here, watch me open my hand. <laughs> ow, 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 ow. Open my hand. So, so speaking You'll of some, of some of the fans that remember you from the old days, you got any special s something to say? Well, I will tell you, I do. I've uh, <laughs> since since doing that, I have uh, I had owned a I owned a tavern at one time, and I've done some other things. And I do come across people that uh, remember the show. They go, eh, wh weren't you that guy? You know, and I feel kind of feel weird if they would recognize me, but uh, there's a lot of latent zombies that are still out there, a lot of older generation that's, zombies. That's really good. I hope, uh, you know, they can uh -huh. go somewhere. Maybe you can uh, reply well, to uh, on the show. Or, uh, oh, yeah, we do, have, uh, we do have some clips that you brought. Yes, we and, do. And uh, I hope that Professor Spring can handle uh, getting oh, all yeah, yeah, together. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Zoom, Phil. Hi, <laughs> zombies. We're back for another adventure packed, shocking afternoon with the Louis Lomack. <laughs> Today's movie, Frankenstein's Daughter. And believe me, it's against all odds that today's movie is going to be pretty good. 
I'm also going to be doing a little bit of cooking a little later on. <laughs> and I'd like to mention that today's portion of the Shack Theater cooking show is brought to you by Dance in Desk City. Take it, Toulouse. <laughs> Thanks, Toulouse. And welcome, zombies, to Two Toulouse's Dance in Desk City. We got big ones, we got small ones, and our everyday low, low price won't clean out your drawers. And don't forget to ask about our after holidays railway plan. Let us whip up a deal for you. Open 9 to 10 for your shopping and dancing pleasure. <laughs> to locations, wherever, and whenever. <laughs> with each out-of-town shopper with proof of gasoline purchase, we'll throw in absolutely free... A chair! So come on down to Two Two Losers Dancing Death Fish. And now, back to our movie. <laughs> Back from the movie already? <laughs> Just going through the cookbook here and seeing what looks fantastic what I could make. But boy, something smells like it's burning around here. Hmm. Ah! Boy, somebody must have left a burn around during the movie. <laughs> but anyway, whew. Looking through here, <laughs> some how to cook beer? Nah, it's too cold for that. <laughs> How to serve man? Nah, I'm not in the mood. But anyway, I think I might whip up a little soup for the family. In the meantime, let's take a peek at next week's movie. He swore that his place would be taken by whoever owned the house. And that he himself would once again assume human shape. His grave was never found. But here, in the walls of the cellar, for all this time, not all this time. This plaster is new. I'm going to find out what's in that coffin. Come on, give me a hand. <laughs> I decided to make some ham salad. <laughs> Finally got to use the ham from the 10 o'clock Christmas party. <laughs> all it needs to be... Tenderized a little bit, if you know what I mean. <laughs> there, got that baby nice and tender. <laughs> In the meantime, now I think I'll add it to my salad. <laughs> you guys taking notes at home? Cause I'm gonna give you a quiz in a little while. So there's a little bit of lettuce, and of course, what's lettuce and ham without? My world famous vinegar and oil dressing. <laughs> here's the vinegar. <laughs> and here's the oil. <laughs> Have me on the 30 weight, Mom. <laughs> so first, you take one teaspoon of oil. Of